the demon world's king has been impeached and rendered jobless, while the heroic hero was captured following a failed expedition. However, fate brings them together on an unpredictable journey into the unknown, facing numerous dangers and twists. The story continues a week later. Kaltsona reaches where the Frost Dragon is sealed in the Ben Nevis Mountains. She looks around and realizes they have paid a miserable price to seal it, as so many high-ranked mages have died in the Ice Torrent. She goes close to the sealed dragon and speaks in the dragon's language, saying, Oh, the great descendant of the six saint dragons, the ruler of ice, the protector of the royals that have slept till now, awaken upon my summoning. Come forth, the Frost Saint Dragon Ice Room. The next second, Iceram awakens and appears in front of Kaltsona. Kaltsona introduces herself and asks if Iceram remembers her. Iceram tells her to stop using her crappy dragon language as she can speak human language. Kaltsona is surprised that the dragon can speak in human language, and she tells her it has been a long time and she doesn't think Iceram will remember her. Suddenly, Iceram screams at Kaltsona and tells her to address her respectfully. This scares Kaltsona and she then bows in front of Isram and congratulates her on gaining her freedom after 400 years. Isram asks how she is still alive, as she has long passed the limit of a human's lifespan. Kaltsona explains that she was revived to become undead by His Highness Copperfield, who has lived until now through the blood of elves and is working hard to revive the previous realm. She then asks Isram to help them, but he refuses, saying that he protected the kingdom because of the contract with the king. But there is no need for that now. Kaltsona asks Isram to help them in return for reviving her, but she still refuses, as helping them revive the realm isn't a fair deal. Kaltsona then asks her to defeat someone for her, and Isram agrees. However, Isram asks her, isn't she one of the top humans, and isn't it rare for her to have an enemy she can't deal with? Then Kaltsona replies that the guy is very strong and she isn't 100% sure if she can kill him. Finding it interesting, Isram asks where her enemy is. Meanwhile, at night, Merlin suddenly wakes up as his heart starts hurting again, and while Isram is thinking of killing the enemy, Merlin is also thinking of killing a strong individual to ease the curse. Kaltsona then tells Isram that she will prepare everything and the enemy will come only to die themselves. Still, at night, Merlin is in pain, and he thinks that the interval of the curse is shorter than usual because he recently killed Bernard and Ian. But they are both undead, so killing them didn't help with his curse. Also, even the Goblin Emperor was so weak that it couldn't alleviate his curse. Alice comes downstairs and asks Merlin why he isn't sleeping and is tossing around so much. She then sees Merlin sweating and in severe pain. This surprises Alice since it's rare to see Merlin in pain, and she asks him what is wrong. She tries to help Merlin, but he refuses her help, saying it's an old problem and he's used to it. He then lies down on the bed. Alice puts a blanket on Merlin and says he doesn't have to bear it alone. And if something like this happens again, he can just call her. But she realizes what she has just said and quickly changes the topic. She says she's worried about him because they pay the rent together, so she would be in trouble if he died for no reason. Merlin thinks that even Alice pities him, and he feels like a failure as a demon king. Alice then puts hot milk on the side and tells him to take care, and as Alice leaves, Merlin stops her. Merlin says they have been resting for a while and should do some work now. He also tells Alice to at least think about what she is wearing as her clothes are translucent, though he's not interested in a flat chest. Alice shouts at Merlin and quickly goes upstairs. In her room, she curses Merlin, saying she doesn't care if he dies anymore, and downstairs, Merlin wonders if Alice is worried for him but he concludes that she treats everyone like that based on her personality. The next day at the guild, Alice and Merlin walk in, and Hobbes greets them, saying they are inseparable even in the morning, so it must be true love. However, Alice remembers and scolds Hobbes for taking Merlin to an indecent place. Alice and Merlin are checking the missions they can accept, and Luja informs them that yesterday she received a specific request for them. This surprises Alice and Merlin asks what a specific request is. Alice explains that it is a way of commissioning from the Adventurers Guild, where employers can appoint certain candidates to complete specific tasks. She then asks Luja what the commission is. Luja replies that the request is from the Sujaji village at the foot of Ben Nevis Mountain. She tells them that the villagers' dragons are attacking there. Luja adds that there's a rumor of a dragon eating humans and demanding young girls as sacrifices. Hearing that dragons are involved, Merlin thinks that ever since dragons migrated to the southern United Kingdom, the dragon race has been rarely seen by humans, and it is extremely unusual for dragons to attack at this time of the year. Luja tells them the mission level is S, and the reward is 20,000 gold coins. Merlin asks about the dragon's strength, 
and Hobbs tells him that it's not a normal dragon but one of the six saint dragons. And his ice room is sealed nearby, so it must be ice room. The ice dragon. This shocks Luja, as even the Thorn Knights couldn't defeat one of the six saint dragons. Hobbs comments that only the demon king living in the north could defeat one. Luja asks why only the demon king could defeat one. Hobbs explains that a few years ago, the sacred dragon Ives went to fight Lucifer III but have yet to return. Meanwhile, Merlin is happy to hear such praise about himself. He thinks this is worth exploring if it's ice rum, so he says they will accept the task. Luja is against this idea as it is dangerous, but Alice says she can't just sit back and watch if there are casualties. She is determined to continue, so they decide to take on this task. After a while, Arnold barges into the guild and asks Alice to return the heart she stole from him. But Hobbs tells him that Alice is away on a mission with Merlin. At the same time, Merlin sneezes, so Alice asks him if he feels cold. But Merlin replies that he never feels cold and that maybe someone is saying bad things about him. Merlin tells her he doesn't feel cold because he's a cold-blooded animal. Merlin then removes his gloves and touches Alice's cheeks. To Alice's surprise, his hands are warm. He then reveals that the demon's body temperature is higher than a human. Alice then throws a bag at him and says he lost so much money on horse racing that he can't afford a scarf, so she is gifting him one. Merlin says the scarf looks like a bargain, but whatever lands in this devil's hand belongs to him, so he wears it. They then notice an ice mountain and wonder if this is the doing of the ice dragon. Meanwhile, Icerum waits inside the ice mountain. She is angry that Kaltsona brought her to a small village, but Kaltsona apologizes. Icerum tells her not to bother since humans are worthless to her and killing them won't help her acquire immortal merit but she does enjoy humans as food. Kaltsona notices how arrogant Isram is and wonders how the former Realm King managed to sign a contract with her. Kaltsona informs Isram that their target will arrive soon, so she should not be restless. Isram tells her not to make her wait too long since she has not seen her old friends for a long time. She promises that after she helps Kaltsona kill the enemy, she will meet her old friend, Ives. But when Kaltsona turns pale upon hearing the name Ives, Isram demands to know what happened. Kaltsona tells her that she heard a rumor about Lord Ives, but she still determines if it is true. Isram orders her to speak, and Kaltsona reveals that she heard Lord Ives had died at the hands of the ruler of pride, Merlin Lucifer. This angers Isram, and she says there is no way a mere demon king could kill her friend Ives who had absolute control over the dark creatures. She finds it impossible for just a ruler of pride to slay him. Kaltsona quickly tells her that it was just a rumor that the Holy See had sent the sacred dragon Ives to fight Lucifer III, the demon king, but the sacred dragon Ives never returned. However, Isram refuses to believe it and says it's impossible. She then decides to investigate the matter herself after killing Kaltsona's enemy. Seeing that her plan is working, Kaltsona tells her that the enemy is almost there, and they must show themselves. Then, Merlin and Alice reach outside the ice mountain, and Alice notices the bigger mountain. A little girl named Simon greets them and says that she was the one who invited them to defeat the dragon. As Simon talks with them, a shadow observes them. So, that's it guys. So, who do you think is stronger between Merlin and the sacred dragon Isram? And also, will Merlin be able to defeat the dragon before his curse starts to act out again? Hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be the first to find out what happens.